we're back humanoids for a segment I'd like to call getting even prettier with me Carwin. One good thing about mask culture, besides keeping all of the germies at bay, is that people that love to wear too much makeup are having a harder time wearing too much makeup. And when going out was a thing, this palette, the Hourglass Illume Sheer Color Trio, was like my magic go-to thing. I could add dimension and color to my face in like 2.5 seconds. And if you're like me and you very much feel like less is more when it comes to the makeup you put on your face, you'll really enjoy this easy makeup using one amazing product and my favorite makeup tools. Fingers. I don't usually wear foundation and concealer, but if I were to wear foundation with this look, I would probably use Charlotte Tilbury's Light Wonder Foundation. It's the one that you shake up. That works really well with this formula. The great thing about using your fingertips is that they're warm. Because they're warm, they help creamy products get even creamier. This particular product works really well for me. I'm like a light to medium skin tone depending on my tan. But if you're extra fair or darker, you can just go to a Sephora or an Ulta and have someone help you pick out three cream products with the same kind of color formula. So we have a warm brown, not too red enriched, but it's definitely warm. So it can be like a bronzing contour, also known as a brontour. We have a coral blush here, always like a very healthy color. And this highlight has a gold undertone. Gold is always going to look healthier than silver. So yeah, if you're an extra light skin tone or darker to extra dark, you can just go to Sephora and Ulta and speak with people there that actually know what they're talking about and have them help you find three cream products that will be good replacements for these. I love the texture. The brontour is very creamy. The coral color is a little bit more dense and then the golden highlight is the driest and almost has like a powder finish, but I really like that. So I find that this palette is super easy to use. But overall, the main objective with this makeup is dimension, dimension, dimension. So the areas that recede and go back, we're going to add darker colors that are more matte to really give the illusion of dimension. And for the parts of the face that come forward, we're gonna add a little bit more reflective texture so that we could bounce light off of these areas and really bring them forward. So right now I'm sitting in front of natural light because this makeup is or daytime, so it's important to have natural light and even light coming at you from all sides. You don't want like more light coming on this side. You're gonna end up with a lopsided makeup looking all not cute. Cream products don't oftentimes have the longest wear unless they set to like a really dry finish. So this product isn't the most long wearing, it's just very easy to use. So if you want to do a similar look, but with products that are longer wearing, you can find products that are waterproof and cream. So you can substitute what I'm doing here today with different products. So first things first, do you wanna prep the skin? I used a softening lotion, a face oil, and a light moisturizer. I love using a face oil because it's like instant gratification. Your skin instantly looks hydrated and glowing and dewy. But the most important thing is sunscreen. So most of your skin damage is going to come from the sun. So try and wear SPF 50. If you wear SPF 30 or lower, keep in mind that you should be reapplying. So if you're going to spend like 30 to 45 minutes in direct sunlight, you're probably going to want to reapply your whole makeup. SPF 50 works really well. I would probably say direct sunlight for an hour. You might want to put some sunscreen on top. And some sunscreens you can apply on top. It will just be hard to apply if you're wearing like a lot of powder. I would recommend using a cream if you're planning on putting sunscreen on top of your makeup. The more you spend on sunscreen now, the less you have to spend on lasers and Botox later. Think about that. So since we're going to use our fingertips, it's important to wash those hands, people. You can sing happy birthday. You can sing kumbaya, my lord, wash your hands. You could sing Body by Megan Thee Stallion. I don't care. Wash your hands really thoroughly and your nails, please. Now with clean fingers, let's get to know our face. We have the jawbone and the hollow underneath the jawbone. Above the jawbone, feel another hollow between the jawbone and the cheekbone. When it starts all the way back here next to the ear, and it comes all the way forward. You can feel it with your fingers. This whole area is a hollow. Above that, we have the cheekbone. Starts kind of like where the top of my ear is and it ends right here. If you smile where the cheekbone ends, there's a bunch of fat here. This is the apple of your cheek. So the apple of the cheek 
goes into the cheekbone, which ends around here. And then above the cheekbone, we have another hollow. This is the temples of the face. And then next to the temples, we have the brow bone. The brow bone comes forward and then the whole eye comes back, but then the lid of the eye also comes forward. So we have hollows inside of the eye and then the brow bone. Above the brow bone, we have the forehead and the part of the forehead that recedes is right at the hairline. It goes back. So we have the hairline, the temples, the eyes, the inside and outside of the crease. We have the hollows under the cheekbone. We have the hollow under the jaw. So now that we literally have a feel for the face, let's get started adding washes of color. We don't want anything to have sharp lines. We just want everything to be a soft whisper of color, but enough to create shape. And keep in mind that the first place that you use any tool, using a brush, a sponge, fingertips, first place that you touch your face with color, most of the color is gonna come off right where you touch it. And then as you use that tool, the makeup is gonna come out of that tool and onto your skin. So the tool starts as an applicator, but then it becomes a blending tool. So starting from the bottom, let's define the jaw. Some people like me have a little extra uh, go, 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 go. Oh, right here. So for me, I like to add color right there first because we want to create a shadow here and the illusion that it's not there. I'm going to take my middle finger and I'm going to press it in the bronzer, the brontor, and I'm going to just share it because sharing is caring people. I'm going to share it with this side and I'm going to press right on top of my... Uh, I'm getting a little bit more and I'm going to now press just right on the outside of the jaw. Some people have really defined jaws, so defined that they don't want to make it any more defined, which is fine. But even if you don't want to create a lot of dimension under your jaw, it's important to just put a little bit of the brown right on the edge so that the colors that you have all over your face will be cohesive and this part of your face will be tied into those colors. Middle finger, I'm now pressing around the outside of my jaw and I have a beard so I I have to like really work it into my skin to get past the hair onto the skin and then a lower where I haven't applied any color I'm gonna take my fingers that went from an applicator to a blender I'm gonna use my clean fingers to just press and bring that color down. Now let's move on to shaping the cheeks. With clean fingers, let's find exactly where we wanna put that contour first. Right next to your ear, you're gonna feel that hollow. This is where you're gonna put the contour first. The darkest part of your face will always be on the outside so that that part really goes back. So you're going to apply the color first back here and then we're going to blend it forward towards the corners of the mouth. So I'm gonna take my middle finger and my ring finger, press it, in the color. I'm gonna share it, cause sharing is caring, between my other fingers. And right where I was before, underneath the jaw, I'm going to press, 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 bounce, 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 bounce. So I'm pressing and applying the color right here. And then as the color comes off of my fingertips, now it's a blending tool. So going towards the corners of my mouth, I'm going to have a back and forth motion of bouncing and pressing and it'll slowly bring that color forward. A lot of people love a contour so for those people if you're gonna use this technique again start in the back. Apply the color off of your fingertips and then as it comes off you can work it forward towards your mouth. Voila, voila. So no harsh lines. I mean, you can definitely see that it's there, which is great. But what I'll do with my clean fingers, because I have a beard, I'm going to just press, massage it down. The beard is more cool. There's a lot of gray in this area. So I'm just going to warm it up a little bit by taking what was in my fingers and pressing it around the rest of my beard, really working it into my skin. And where you see that line, I'm gonna take the same fingers and I'm just gonna press my clean fingers. It'll warm up the product and blend it out. Cool. 
So we're going to move on to the temples. The temples don't need a ton of dimension, but they do need a little. So I'm going to use my middle finger, share the pigment right at the edge of my hairline. I'm going to press the color. And then as it comes off of my finger, I'm going to blend it out and fill the rest of my temple. See? For the forehead, it's really important not to have any space between the hairline and your brontor. I'm going to take my middle finger and my ring finger, pressing it in the color, sharing it, because what class? And right at my hairline, I'm going to just massage it into my hairline. So I want to press it back into my scalp. Soft motions, I'm not tugging or anything, I'm just lightly pressing. You don't want to get too much on your hair. If you get any on your hair though, you can just press and wipe, wipe away on the hair. But you really want to get all up in that hairline. You don't want this skin to be white. You want it to be a little bit more brontoured. Now that I have it at the peak of my hairline, I'm going to take what's in the rest of my fingertips and I'm going to just press around the edges. Bring it down here as well so that that'll blend it forward. Everyone loves a nose contour right now. However, during the day, a nose contour can be very obvious. So I'm going to take a little bit of brown just on the side. I'm going to bounce, 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 bounce. Press, 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 press. And now that the color is there, with a clean finger, I'm gonna use to just press around there. I'm also gonna take what was in my fingertips and just work it underneath the center of my brow and down into that contour I just added. I love using this as eyeshadow. I have a downturned eye shape, so in order to create the illusion that it's not as downturned, I'm going to add a little bit of this brown cream on the outside of my eye, making sure to not put any here. That way it's going to tilt the shape up. And I just want it to be a wash of colors. I'm not going to be super precise. And I'm going to add it on the outside of my lid and also on the inside of my lid, all the way up to my brow bone. So this whole area now has the brontor. And again, I'm not going to apply any in this area because I want this area to look lifted so I'm gonna apply it just right above from my outer lid to my brow bone and blend it into my brow and I'm using a little bit right on the inside of my lid up into my brow a little bit of the brontor right up in there and with a clean finger I'm just going to press 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 Press, press, press. And I have green eyes, blue eyes, whatever eyes. So I'm going to use this lightly, softly, gently, just right under the eye. That way it gives the whole eye a cohesive look. Kind of like putting color on the bottom of your jaw. Applying the color under your eye is going to help your eye look very cohesive. A little bit of the dry highlight on my ring finger and I'm going to share because sharing is caring. I'm going to share the highlight with the other ring finger and halfway between the outer corner of my eye and right where the cheekbone comes out in between these two, I'm going to bounce the color to apply it and as it comes off of my finger, I'm going to blend it forward and back. The furthest forward I'm going to go is the front of my apple. And the furthest back I'm going to go is probably right at the end of my brow. So up here and down. Not any further than the front of your apple. Got a little highlight. People love a nose highlight right now, but during the day also very obvious so just go light. I'm gonna do a bloop and swoop. Bloop right on the little edge of the nose and then leave a little bit of a space and then do a little swoop. Boop and swoop. With a clean fingertip I'm going to press around the bloop and I'm gonna press around the swoop. 
I want the very middle of my eye to be very dimensional. So I'm gonna use my pinky finger, I'm gonna apply the color right in the center of my lid, and I'm gonna bring it all the way up to my brow. Pinky, center of my eye, and I'm gonna work it all the way up to my brow. Between the inner corner of my eye and my nose, I'm gonna apply some right in there. And I'm also gonna use my pinky to apply it just right in the middle. If you wear a lip color, apply a little on your cupid's bow, and then after you apply your lip color, feel free to put a little bit of highlight in the middle of your lip. I don't wear a lip color, so I wouldn't do that, but you can definitely do that. Last but not least, we've got the blusha. I'm going to use my ring finger. I'm gonna get a little bit on my fingertip, and I'm gonna share it. And like I said, we have the front of the apple, and we have the side of the apple. So right on the side of the apple, we're going to apply our color. And then as it comes off of our finger, we're gonna blend it forward towards the center of the apple and back. Forward, no further than the center of the apple and back. So right where the highlight ends, that's where you can end your blush. You don't want it to go too high. That's very 80s, 90s. We're just gonna keep it lower because we want it to be natural. And if you're a blush whore, feel free to add more. Start again on the side of the apple and then work it towards the front of the apple and back. A lot of people like to blush their nose. So if you wanna blush your nose, just take what's left on your finger and I like to just press it right around the bloop and swoop. So right in the middle of those two and on the sides of the nose. If you want it to look even more cohesive, you can take a little bit and right where the bronzer ends and it meets your skin, you can just, just press a little bit where the bronzer meets the skin and also put a little bit on your chin. So, um, I think that's it, people. Let's get the hair down and get a feel for this makeup. Okay, yes. We've got soft, subtle washes of color, some dimension going on. And now that my hair's down, I'm like, you know what? You know what? I want a little bit more contour under my cheek. I'm gonna take more color, share it with my fingers. Again, I'm gonna start where I was before. So at the back of the face, I'm gonna add most of the color. And then as it comes off of my fingers, I'm gonna move it towards the center of my mouth. And then work it down on my beard. And there you have it, people. So feel free to finish this with mascara, some brows, a little lippy. But yeah, this is the finished look. If you practice, 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 even with mascara and brows and lips, it'll probably take you 10 minutes, maybe 15 tops, but it's super fast. <laughs> you can finish it with the finishing spray if you want, but yeah, I would just roll out of the house looking like this. And um, yeah, if you know people that wear too much makeup, feel free to share this as a hint to them. Like, hey, I found this really good tutorial. Maybe you should check it out because your makeup looks like a mess. <laughs> Don't say that. But um, yeah, that's it. And uh, catch you on the flip side. Practice, 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 and share with your friends.